Hello everyone, what is up? It is me, LBMTG, and for today's video we will be taking a look at the 40 newest spoilers for Corset 2019, also known as M19. Um, the past 40 spoilers, this covers June 19th, June 18th, as well as June 17th spoilers. So if you've already seen the ones from the previous two days, then about halfway through this video you guys can feel free to click off if you've uh, if you've already seen them and don't want to hear my opinions on them. But uh, for these new cards, there's a lot of really cool ones, and so we'll go ahead and get started uh, right away. So the first card we have here is Amulet of Safekeeping. Whenever you become the target of a spell... Uh, or ability an opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless its controller pays 1, and then creature tokens get minus 1, minus 0. Right now, I don't think that this card is very strong, um, but I think that maybe once Ravnica comes out and Selesnya, uh, the, the cards for Selesnya normally revolve around a tokens mechanic, maybe the cards in there will be pretty strong, and then the Amulet of Safekeeping will become slightly better there with the creature tokens getting minus one, minus zero. Um, the ability of countering a spell unless they pay one if it targets you, it, it's not great. Um, this card seems like it wants to be a good sideboard staple, but it just really isn't. The next card we'll be taking a look at here is Goreclaw Terror of Qualsisma. That's uh, a legendary creature bear. Creature spells that you cast with power 4 or greater cost 2 less to cast. And then whenever Goreclaw Terror of Qualsisma attacks, each creature you control with power 4 or greater gets plus 1, plus 1, and gains trample until end of turn. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed that we got a legendary bear that wasn't a 2-2 two, two for 2. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed about that, but nonetheless, this card seems pretty cool. Um, the artwork is very nice as well. This is a very, very nice painting of a bear, um, or maybe it's digital art. I'm not 100% sure, but it, it, it looks very nice. Um, and this card probably won't see a ton of play. Some people are saying, uh, you can see over here, uh, this user says, Mono Green Stompy, meet your new friend. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if that's true. Um, the ability for power 4 or greater to cost 2 less is quite strong. It makes your Ronus the Indomitable only, cast, only cost 1 mana, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, but aside from that, the, uh, right now in standard, just not necessarily the best. Carnage Tyrant for four mana sounds pretty good, though. I'm not gonna lie, that seems that seems quite strong. The problem with cards that require you to play um, things like Power Four or Greater, a lot of those cards are going to have higher converted mana costs. And with that being said, if you don't have out a Gore Claw, then you're going to be paying more mana for these spells than you want to be paying for them um, and it might cause some some deck building errors and people wanting to play eight drops that they think that they can always play on six or something along those lines um, but nonetheless this card seems pretty cool and i think it might see a little bit of play next card we're looking at here uh, is in a foreign language so we'll go ahead and click this so we can see what the translation is so it is contrite cleric uh, which is one in a white for a cleric spirit with flying. You can sacrifice it to exile all cards from target player's graveyard. This card seems quite strong, maybe for the modern spirits deck as well. Having a free ability to remove um, to remove the uh, the graveyard from someone can be quite quite strong, especially in modern. Um, I think I'm going to uh, just kind of skip over to the more important cards now. Like open the graves really doesn't. Uh, do a whole lot. I'm not overly impressed with Open the Graves. Uh, Isareth, I'm kind of impressed with. It's It seems like it might be good, especially in Limited. Um, so Isareth is 1 BB for 3-3, uh, three, three, and then it has Death Touch, and then whenever it attacks, you may pay X, and when you do, return target creature with converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield with a corpse counter on it. If that creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. So I think this card is pretty sweet. Um, the ability to reanimate things on a creature, even if the creature is maybe not the best body in the world, still a 3-3 three, three for 3 with a keyword is still pretty strong. Um, but the ability to reanimate your best cards can can sometimes be quite, quite strong and limited. And uh, maybe it'll have a little bit of constructive potential just because it could possibly be a way to bring back, again, just like your crazy, ridiculous cards. Uh, it doesn't really work great with cards like the Scarab God, though, because after it reanimates them, it just exiles them again. Um, so maybe not the best in that kind of a strategy, but uh, I think this card has some potential. It seems very, very good to me. 
Uh, the next card we have here is a Mythic Bone Dragon. Uh, this card seems like it's going to be great and limited, but not necessarily great and constructed. Uh, the next card we have, though, is Chromium, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> this card is probably the best Esper win condition that Esper has had in a long time. Um, maybe since back when Dragons of Tarkir was around and we had things like... Um, uh, Silumgar and Ojitai as the Esper win conditions, uh, but here you can see Chromium is 7 mana, uh, has Flash, and the spell can't be countered, so it breaks apart the Control Mirror, which is very nice, has Flying, and then you can discard a card, and then until end of turn, it becomes a human with base power and toughness 1-1, one, one, loses all abilities, and gains Hexproof, it can't be blocked this turn. This is super nice because this card, you can just discard a card to save it, and you're still guaranteed to get in at least one point of damage, which can be very, very nice for Chromium. Card seems very, very strong. Um, On to the next cards we have here. Well, first we have Omniscience, which is just a fantastic reprint. This card was like $30 before. Uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with some of the reprints that they're putting out in this set. I'm, I'm extremely impressed, I should say, in all honesty. Uh, cards like Omniscience, Scapeshift, uh, they're just great choices crucible of worlds as well great choices to reprint especially in a core set where maybe they wouldn't fit the best um in in other standard sets but in a core set they fit very very nicely um i'm not sure if it'll see a ton of play maybe some people will try and ramp into it that would be a pretty cool kind of deck to see um, but on to the next five cards we have here, uh, we're looking at Diamond Mare, actually uh, this is six cards, Diamond Mare, Plague Mare, Surge Mare, Lightning Mare, Vine Mare, and Shield Mare. This is an uncommon cycle of uh, horses, um, which are quite quite decent. I'm not super big on the Diamond Mare, but the other five seem uh, seem pretty strong. Uh, I'm, I kind of like them. Uh, Epic Hero of Blood, this card seems just like your draft chaff from, uh, for a black-white gain life kind of deck. Nightmare's Thirst also kind of feels the same way, um, unless you can really get gaining life to, to start happening for you. Um, like maybe something, it works quite well with something like this Child of Night here, where it has, uh, it, Child of Night being a 2-1 with lifelink, you can gain 2 life, and then cast Nightmare's Thirst, and then it would essentially give target creature minus 3, minus 3 until end of turn, because it also gained you a life. Um, so this card has some potential in the right deck, uh, but if you don't have the right deck for it, it, it seems quite bad. Uh, the next card we have here is Mistcaller. I'm not going to talk a ton about this because Nikachu and Strictly Better MTG both have already made uh, videos about this card, um, and they they spoke a whole lot more about this card. If you're if you care more uh, about this card, you can go ahead and look and see uh, what they said about it. Basically, it seems pretty strong, but um, the fact that it's a 1-1 one, one for 1, there's not a, gr a lot of great merfolk that are 1-1s one, for 1, um, or at least just 1-drops in general. And so this one has some potential, but it just, the effect is just so... There's a lot of ways for your opponents to play around it, I guess, is is how uh, it would be best to, to say that. The next card we have here is Sarkin's B Broken Seal, which is 3 red for an enchantment. Whenever you cast a creature spell with power 4, 5, or 6, you may target a creature, planeswalker, or player. Sarkin's Broken Seal deals 4 damage to the chosen target. Whenever you cast a creature spell with power 7 or greater, Sarkin's Broken Seal deals 4 damage to all creatures and planeswalkers each opponent controls. Uh, this card, when you first play it, it's a 4-mana do-nothing, which isn't great, um, but this ability here of whenever you cast a creature spell with power 4, 5, or 6, you may target a creature planeswalker player and then have it deal 4 damage to the chosen target, that seems very strong, especially if you're going to be playing something like the Legendary Bear that we already talked about earlier on in this video, then you can really start rifling off some of these triggers and it can be very, very nice and maybe like a, a red-green uh, not necessarily a ramp deck, but at least uh, a deck trying to play some bigger creatures. Um, here we have the basic Hydra for the set, this one being called Hungry Hydra. It's X and a green, enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters. It can't be blocked by more than one creature, which is nice, which means it's going to be hard for them to uh, to trade with it, especially if you're putting a lot of mana into it. And then whenever it's dealt damage, you put that many plus one plus one counters on it, which is super, super nice. They can only block it with one creature, and if their one creature isn't enough to kill this thing, then it's just going to get even bigger, which is super, super cool. Um, seems quite strong in limited, although the removal in this set also seems quite strong as well, so maybe not uh, as much of a bomb as it would be in other sets, but it still seems fairly strong. Metamorphic Alteration seems like a great card, 2 mana to turn something into a clone, uh, seems, seems quite nice. 
Alpine Moon is a card that people are excited for uh, in the modern format. Um, this one, when it enters the battlefield, you choose a non-basic land card name, and then land your opponent's control with the chosen name, lose all land types and abilities, and they gain tap, add one mana of any color. Uh, this means that it shuts off your opponent's Tron lands, and it's a one mana answer to Tron, which is super, super nice. A Johnny's Last Stand, not necessarily a great card. It's another card with a Loxodon Smiter slash uh, Wiltleaf Leech effect, uh, meaning, uh, or obstinate Bailoth effect, meaning if your opponent causes you to discard it, then something good happens. Aside from that, it doesn't seem great to me. Um, we got some of the signal, uh, some of the signpost uncommons here in the set, so you can see red green. Uh, red green seems to be like a dragon kind of ramp sort of strategy here. Um, you can see this one being a mana dork that can then create a dragon. Here we have Psychic Symbiote, which is uh, four blue black for a 3-3 three, three flyer. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent discards a card and you draw a card. This card seems pretty decent to me. Um, the next card we have here, I think, oops, sorry, I just skipped an entire line here. Uh, Aerial Engineer, I think this one seems like the best to me. I could end up being wrong about that, but this card just seems super strong. Um, if, as long as you have an artifact in play, it's a 4-4 four, four flyer for 4, which is super nice. Uh, maybe not the splashiest card in the world, but it seems like it'll be a decent card, especially in Limited. Uh, Brawl Bash Ogre showing us that the sacrifice mechanic, or just sacrificing creatures in general, um, is part of the black-red color combination here. Uh, a 4 mana 3-3 three, three with Menace is still quite strong, but then having the ability to sack a creature to make it even bigger is quite nice. And then again, blue-white being an artifact matters kind of uh, sub-theme. Uh, this card here allows you to take extra turns after you put some charge counters on it. I'm not super big on this card. There's not really any point in talking about it. Resplendent Angel is kind of nice. A 3-mana Angel seems pretty good. Um, caring about gaining life, maybe not the best, but with something like Lyra Dawnbringer, uh, it causes you to gain the 5 life right away, which means that you can uh, gain four, or you can uh, create the 4-4 four, four, uh, Angel token right away, which is super cool, uh, especially if you're going some sort of an Angel tribal deck, because also remember Lyra gives your other Angel plus one plus one, meaning the Resplendent Angel is a 4-4, four, four, and the token it creates is a 5-5, five, five. so that's that could be uh, something very decent, a, like a mono-white angels deck. Palladium Moor is the Ruiner. This is the next card in the uh, in the Elder Dragon cycle. Uh, Flying Vigilance Trample for a 6-6, six, six, and it has Hexproof if it hasn't dealt damage yet. This is pretty cool because it means that you're at least going to get one hit in with it before it dies, which is super nice. Crucible of Worlds and Scape Shift, fantastic, fantastic reprints. Thank you, Wizards. Dark Dweller Oracle, not a card that I'm super high on, just a 2-mana two 2-2 two two with a bit of upside. It goes nicely with the uh, red-black mechanic, which causes you to uh, sacrifice creatures for value. That's basically what you're doing here uh, with this card. Elvish Clan Caller is kind of nice. It's a 2-mana Elf Lord, and it has the ability to, later in the game, search up your other Elf Lords, which is very nice. Smelt, just a decent little reprint here. Nothing too fancy. Destroy Target Artifact for 1-mana. Rise and Scholar, again, just kind of draft chaff. Uh, Volley Veteran, maybe for your Goblins deck. Seder Enchanter is another uh, Enchantress, which is super nice. Enchantress being uh, similar to Mace Enchantress, which is a 3-mana creature that causes you to draw a card every time you cast an enchantment. Uh, so this makes, I believe, three effects now that have that ability, or three creatures that have that ability. Um, the two Enchantresses, as well as this one Enchanter. Mirror Image, I think, is going to be a fantastic card in draft. Um, you may have Mirror Image enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature you control, so it can't copy your opponent's bombs. Um, it's not able to do that, but it is able to just, if you have one good creature, this is just a second copy of that creature for only three mana, which seems very nice to me. Um, going on to the next day here, we had uh, Liliana Spoils here. Uh, target opponent discards a card and then look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a black card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Uh, this card does not seem great to me. Uh, as an 8-rack player, I would know all about good discard spells, and this is unfortunately not one of them. Uh, this card is quite, quite... <laughs> quite bad. In all honesty, four mana just to make your opponent discard one card is not great. Even if you do get to uh, search for, an, or not even search, look at the top five cards for another black uh, card to put into your hand, it's still, it's still not a great card. 
Uh, and then the final two cards that we'll be looking at today, uh, Vivictus Asmadi the Dyer, uh, which is a legendary Elder Dragon here. Uh, this one being the Jund one, so three black, red, green for a legendary creature Elder Dragon with flying. Uh, whenever it attacks, for each player, choose target permanent that player controls. Those players sacrifice those permanents. Each player who sacrificed a permanent this way reveals the top card of their library, then puts it onto the battlefield if it's a permanent card. Um, what a lot of people have been saying about this card is that it really is not great, and I kind of agree with them. It's going to be very decent in limited. A 6 mana 6, 6 flyer in limited, fantastic. But in constructed, it's just not where you want to be. The fact that it isn't a May ability makes things really, really awkward. Um, and so I think if it had the May ability, then maybe we're looking at something that could be a little bit stronger. But um, it, this card just not not necessarily one of the best Elder Dragons. I think right now uh, the Esper 1 Chromium uh, has the potential to be the best Elder Dragon that we're seeing so far. Although we don't have um, all of them revealed yet. And then the final card we're going to take a look at today here is Lathless Dragon Queen, who is 4 red red for a 6-6 six, six flying dragon. Whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a 5-5 five, five red dragon creature token with flying. And then it has an ability that says for one to red dragons you control, get plus one, plus oh, until end of turn. For those of you who bought the uh, the dragon-themed commander decks, this card fits perfectly into that deck. Uh, if, you, if you play that deck, you definitely need to pick up one of these for, uh, for that deck. Um, maybe in standard... Again, there might be some sort of a red-green dragons deck, um, or maybe just a multicolor dragons deck, since we do have all these new elder dragons. Um, Lithus seems very, very strong in that kind of a deck, where you just want to play as many dragons as possible, and I think that this card also helps make Varric's Bladewing a lot better, um, just being a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four flying dragon. Um, having a dragon that doesn't cost you more than 6 mana seems pretty reasonable, um, when you're trying to ramp out all these dragons. So I think Lathless has some potential for a nice little dragons deck, and I think this card makes Varric's a lot better. So if you guys did enjoy this video, this has been uh, the Core Set 2019 40 most recent spoilers. Um, again, hopefully you guys did enjoy it. Like I said, if you guys have any opinions that differentiate from mine down low in the comment section, be sure to tell me all about them. Uh, let me know if there was any cards that you think I was, you know, not so high on that you guys are super high on, or if there's any cards that I said were pretty cool that you think just won't, you know, do anything. Uh, go ahead and let me know down low in the comments. If you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like as well. Greatly, greatly appreciate it and it helps out the channel. And I will see you guys here tomorrow for yet another Magic the Gathering video.